Hello and welcome back. Today we're finally going to be putting the truncator into a server chassis. This has been a long awaited project for me, but I finally have everything I need to complete it and then eventually I'll get a USB Type-C connector to run just one cable from the server or the gaming computer to uh, where I sit or my client station, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and just open up all this stuff that I have. It's actually not that much. Um, so this right here should be the uh, rails for the server chassis, which I will show you guys here shortly. Oh, actually this was way easier to open. There's really not much to this, but I figure we could check it out anyway. Wow, this big box for literally nothing, or almost nothing. This box is actually destroyed already. So these are the rails themselves. These uh, are adjustable uh, to any um, height, or I'm sorry, not height, but any length. Um, they're all black. They're like 20 bucks off of Amazon. A pretty sweet deal. Uh, Maybe some aluminum. You could definitely bend these. Actually, I already have. Uh, but they should be strong enough anyway to hold up the server. So the reason why I got these rails is uh, the rails that are supposed to go with the server um, actually end up scratching the server up along the side. At least that's what other people said. Um, so I wanted some rails where I didn't have to worry about the server getting scratched. And basically, I can just set the server chassis right on top of this because of the way... Uh, they're designed and I don't have to worry about scratching the, the server if I pull it out or uh, retract it back inside. Uh, so that should keep it looking pretty good for a long time. And if I have to remove it, well, it just simply just lift it up and you're good to go. So those are the rails. Uh, really not much to that. And then of course, uh, we're going to be switching to a 360 millimeter uh, all-in-one cooler. I got this really because there's two options, maybe three options as far as coolers go. Um, this had a lot of uh, good reviews. Uh, I didn't really read too much or too many bad things about it. I think it's pretty much luck of the draw on that one. So I just went with this. And there's really no other reason uh, beyond that. Now I suppose I could have done a, um, a custom water cooling loop or something, but honestly, I don't really want to take the time to do that and this will just simply cool uh, the CPU so there's really no need to do a custom loop although it would be pretty cool. Um, so this thermal tank radiator and it comes with three fans we're not going to use these I already have my own. These are probably pretty good uh, but I don't need them these are all PWM which is kind of nice to see and they have some pretty nice sleeving but again pretty much worthless uh, to me. Uh, let's see here, so these are mounting brackets and screws, and then of course the 360 millimeter rad. Uh, this thing should do a really good job of cooling my 5960X. Uh, I could probably overclock the crap out of it. And uh, yeah, I don't really know what else there is to say about that, so we're just stick it back in here for now. And then we're going to unbox the uh, server chassis. So I decided to go with a Rosewell 4U server chassis, primarily because it was the only chassis that I could find that readily supported internal fans and that looked like it could support a radiator. And based off some other pictures I've seen online, uh, it looked like other people had also already been putting in radiators into the server chassis, uh, albeit they were you know, smaller radiators. Uh, like 120 millimeter ones or uh, two, 240? Yeah, it seems right. Uh, so this thing, there's a lot of boxes in here. Just gonna move this down to the floor here so it's a little bit easier to work with and extract uh, from the box, the shipping boxes. Um, all right. So hopefully I can just lift this right up. And this isn't really that heavy. Um, I guess it's pretty heavy. So this looks like it's going to be a lot bigger than I was hoping, but that's actually okay because knowing myself, I will probably end up changing my server configuration in the future anyway. And this will keep me happy for a little while, or at least the equipment I have will keep me happy for a little while. Let's go ahead and remove all that. 
So the reason why I really like this case is because the three fans in front. So I'm probably going to move this door because I don't really care for the way it looks. Uh, this is actually seems pretty high quality compared to what a lot of people are saying online. So we're going to replace these three fans here probably with some white LED ones. And of course put the entire gaming computer into this. And it should look, well, it's not really going to look very cool, at least for us, because it will be in the closet anyway. But once it's in here, it should turn out to be a pretty nice build. So all I have to do is remove the gaming computer. I'm actually not going to show this part on camera, but I just want to show you where it's at on the rack. I've already just pulled it out a little bit so I can work with it. Uh, but let's go ahead and get this thing off of here and take it apart. So this Corsair Air 240 case has served me pretty well in the past. I did a video a very long time ago about when I first started out where I actually had three radiators inside of this tiny case. I had two uh, 120 millimeters at the front and then another 120 millimeter at the back. And of course, one was for the CPU, and I had two GPUs at the time, two Titan X's in fact, that were both water-cooled from EVGA in here. Uh, so this thing has been with me for quite some time, but it's about time now to give it a little bit more space and a little bit more room to breathe and higher overclocks, of course. So we're just gonna go ahead and start dismantling it. I've already moved one side panel case, and I'm just gonna have to move the rest of them. So this chassis has actually been kind of a mess on this side, and I'll show you the rat's nest that is back here. Uh, hopefully I won't have that problem with the, the server. Actually, I shouldn't say hopefully. I should clean it up and actually try. Uh, one thing I do like about the Corsair H240 is all the different options you have to mount uh, fans. So I actually have some of my own custom, uh, or not custom, but I have my own filters on here. Uh, this is, they've basically been here for quite some time. I bought these off Amazon forever ago. These were nice to have so that way I didn't have to worry about dust building up all over the place inside of the case. And they've done a pretty good job and in fact they're still pretty clean to this day. So I've never cleaned these but as you can tell there's very little dust buildup uh, from this. Of course that's where it was exhausting. And the front, there's actually a lot more dust buildup I'm sure, but that's okay. Just gotta remove tons and tons of fans out of here. I think at one point I had 12 fans inside of this chassis, which is kind of amazing to think about. And of the 12 fans, I think uh, 10 maybe were 120 millimeter fans. I'm not, I don't actually remember, but basically I had a dual uh, push pull configuration for all of the radiators when they were in here originally. But I've since cut back, uh, obviously, because that kind of configuration is not exactly necessary. At least it is. It wasn't at the time, but I did it anyway, just more of a just because reason, more so than anything. So let's go ahead and get this thing swiveled around real quick so you can see the back side. So as you can tell, there's obviously a rat's nest in here. I didn't really do a good job of cleaning this up, and the reason why there's so many extra cables is because originally there was two Titans in here, and it was really difficult to remove all the excess cables because I already had cable managed everything, and I didn't want to take it all apart. I just wanted to slap in my new Titan Pascal and, you know, have a field day with it. I didn't really want to play around with all the cable management. So we've got some work ahead of us to do. I suppose I should just go ahead and actually try re removing everything that's going to be in my way 
as far as removing the motherboard from this case. I've actually got kind of lost already in here as I'm sitting here trying to remove one of the fans. And there's what's really bad is I'm using a lot of flan fan splitters. And the reason why I'm using fan splitters is because I can have, instead of having a bunch of cables all over the motherboard, I can just have one or two. And of course the PWM fans. So that way it looks a little bit cleaner on the inside and all of the mess obviously can be hidden back here without anyone noticing. That's probably going to change today. So these are airflow optimized fans. I do have static pressure ones in here, but we will remove those here shortly. So I think I'm just going to leave all this and remove everything in here first. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and remove the Titan X out of here first because it's the easiest to access, obviously, and it should be also the easiest to remove. Now, this Titan has been one of the best cards I've ever had. It absolutely, absolutely destroys every game I've ever thrown at it. High, totally high settings, max out everything, you name it, can handle the card, or game, 60 FPS, no problem. Removing everything else should be quite the breeze. Obviously, I have pretty good access to everything. Uh, the Corsair H100i is what's been in here for quite some time. I would carry this over to the new chassis, but I have a feeling that the 360 millimeter rad will do a little bit better job of cooling the CPU, which is a 5960X, by the way. Um, I don't actually expect it to be that much of a performance difference, or I'm sorry, I, sh I don't expect it to be that much of a uh, difference in heat dissipation or changing my thermals that much, but it should be improved because there is more space uh, for uh, heat dissipation. So I don't think I need to remove the RAM, but I do need to clean up the CPU and I need to get my uh, thermal, or I'm sorry, isopropyl. So let me grab that real quick. So removing this board should be fairly easy. I don't anticipate too many problems with it because I have pretty good access from the back as well as the side, I suppose, or rear, I'm not sure what you want to call it. But let me clean this up before we start removing anything. I don't want to make a mess. I gotta cool, clean the radiator, or the radiator, I gotta clean the copper base plate real quick. So that way, when it touches other things, I don't have to worry about leaving thermal paste all over the desk, even though I put the cotton balls on the desk itself. So it'd probably help a little bit if I actually unplug this from the rear. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna unplug everything I can try to. Jeez, these things are in here good. I haven't had to remove a 24 pin connector in quite some time. Uh, luckily everything else is easily removed from the chest or from the mother, including all the fans. All right, so all that's out of the way. Oh, gotta remove my, my Be Quiet 80 millimeter fan. I've had this for some time. This is I actually tried to do a, uh, maybe not really a Harrison per se, but I actually did try to see if the Be Quiet fan was slightly better than an Noctua fan. I do have 80 millimeter, 80 millimeter Noctua fans uh, somewhere around here. They may actually be, oh yeah, that's right, they're in one of the servers, as you may recall from a previous video. And they do a much better job, actually, than these Be Quiet fans. So I'll probably carry this one over and maybe get a second or just purchase two other Noctua fans. I haven't really decided, but I will be carrying this over at least temporarily into the server chassis because I have it and I oh, might as well use it, right? So we just got the CPU power to remove. This thing is surprisingly not dusty for how long it's been on. Now the outside of the case is dusty, but inside here it's not that bad. And I cannot remove this pin. There we go. All right, so, well, hell, I might as well just remove the motherboard because I have direct access to it. All right, so we should be able to just pick this up right out of here and set it aside. All right, she is out of the way. Okay, so we successfully removed all of the fans out of the front of this uh, bracket slash hard drive tray. So we just need to replace these stock fans with some white LEDs for coolness effect and we should be good to go from there to uh, complete the rest of the build. So the fans I'll be using to put inside of these uh, brackets or fan mounts, whatever you want to call these for the hard drive cage, 
are gonna be these Corsair uh, 120s. I can't remember uh, the exact model of these now, but these are in fact the uh, high airflow uh, version of their fans that they make, and they are white LEDs, which should look really nice in the front when, you, when you're looking at it. So we're just gonna put three of these and each of these, and then we'll move on to the next part. So I don't think I planned this out too well. I may have trouble reaching the CPU cooler from here and may actually end up having to uh, reposition this somehow. These cables were, or I'm sorry, these pipes were a lot shorter than I anticipated. But just by looking at it, it may actually work, assuming the power supply doesn't take up the rest of the room uh, that I need. These fans uh, are Corsair high, sta or I'm sorry, static, yeah, high static pressure fans. These are perfect for radiators. Uh, I did not get Nocto ones because I already have like 50 million of these fans laying around and I couldn't justify the cost. So we're just gonna go ahead and stick these on this radiator instead and we should be good to go. And once we get this in here, we will pretty much be done with uh, the radiator. This thing is really coming together really nicely. Okay, so I already put the IO shield in its place. So I just have to line these up with the existing standoffs and that's perfect so I didn't even notice that my uh, camera ran out of space there uh, so I had to offload some stuff and I just continued building anyway uh, really because I am a little impatient and well maybe not impatient is, isn't the right word but I uh, really excited so I want to get this Done. All right, so before we do any final touches, I need to screw down my AX, uh, AX1200i. Mm, what did I do with those screws? Oh, wait, what did I do with those screws? Uh-oh, oh wait, there they are. I thought I lost them for a moment. All right, so let's get this taken care of and we'll be so close to rack mounting this thing. And before we stick the server on the rack, we're gonna have to make some space here uh, for it. So I think I'm going to move the cyber power ups even further down, probably all the way to the bottom. And then since the server chassis itself is for you, it'll probably take up about this much space. Um, so it, this thing will literally finally be full uh, once that thing is on there, which is going to be awesome. So now I just need to get these rails installed and I think I'll be done with that. I'm probably not going to be able to show this part uh, primarily because it's going to be hard to maneuver around and uh, I just kind of want to get this done. So we got the rails installed where they should be. And now all I have to do is put the server chassis right in there. And I think I am pretty much done, assuming everything powers on correctly. All right, here we go. Hopefully this fits. It would be very nice if I had done a test fit initially. All right, there we go. Maybe I'll just miss a line. She's all the way in. All right, here we go. Power test. All right. And hopefully it gets video. All right, so as you can tell, the gaming computer is up and running perfectly fine in the server chassis, and it's running Firestrike right now. Seems to be doing a pretty good job. Not sure what the temperatures are like. Uh, I'm not gonna really get into that either as much as I'd like to. Uh, I just want to go ahead and start playing video games. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.